Hello, and welcome to Part 3 of the Dental Expert Advisory Series. My name is Ken Harlan with Ozarks Capital Funding, and today's topic is dental office staffing. Today's expert is Ken Smith of Peak Performers, a Michigan-based dental consulting firm specializing in staffing and management. Ken, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Ken. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Appreciate you joining us today. Why don't we first tell us about your background in the dental staffing industry? be happy to. Basically, I've been with uh, Peak Performers for about eight years now and uh, working specifically with dentists and their practice to help them find staff either on a temporary basis or direct hire, direct placement situation. Uh, even though I've only been in the dental staffing business for about eight years, previously I worked with managing a large group of dental practices as well as optical stores and veterinary hospitals. And those businesses all have very similar needs to a staffing company as far as recruiting and management consulting and so on. I haven't been involved with staffing, but I would think that finding the right candidate for a particular practice requires a tremendous amount of careful evaluation. What general steps does your company take to find the right dentist or staff member for a practice? Well, that's a question we get often asked, and it's it's an interesting system that we use. You know, basically, when a practice contacts us about supporting them, with finding a, a person to work on the practice either on a temporary basis or higher, we conduct a pretty thorough practice profile for that office. And what it does is it helps us uncover the key attributes of that practice and to get an understanding of what candidates would be the best fit, both from a clinical standpoint, their hard skills, as well as their soft skills. And then to, to make sure that the match is, is a good one, we also do a thorough interview with each of the folks that contact us about finding a new position or who are looking to pick up work on a temporary basis. And that also helps us uncover their strengths and career goals, which makes the likelihood that the match between the candidate and the practice is much better. Well, I'm sure many practice owners try to cut costs and place self-wanted ads on their own, especially during uh, these tough economic times. Why does it make sense for a practice to utilize your services rather than to look for personnel on their own? Well, that's that's a question. Another question that we come across many, many times, uh, you know, a practice will think that they could post an ad for free on Craigslist or uh, use uh, one of the job boards and so on to try to find staff. But uh, what we try to tell doctors and their, the office managers is that they tend to overlook uh, or look only at their hard costs and uh, directly related to the ad rather than the expense that they have in trying to recruit and hire someone. So, for example, the real expense involves the time of the doctor and the manager answering phone calls to their ad, um, reviewing resumes that get mailed or faxed in, trying to schedule multiple interviews, trying to coordinate their schedule with the candidate's schedule, uh, meeting with the candidates who may or may not be a good fit, and, and all these type of factors. So what we try to do is help them understand that they often neglect to check uh, references as well. So with a, a service such as ours, we can do all the pre-screening, recruiting, the marketing, all the behind-the-scenes work is handled by us. And then what would happen is the doctors then will only meet with the most qualified candidates rather than anybody who, uh, who's at, answered their ad. Um, we also have access to candidates that uh, what we call in our business passive candidates. So they may not be actively looking on job boards or on the, in the newspaper or what have you for a job. Um, they're often currently working and reasonably happy with their position. But uh, if we contact them and talk to them about uh, a new opportunity, they at least they're open to suggestions. And those type of candidates virtually are almost impossible for someone to reach through traditional uh, advertising. Um, you know, we, we have access to those folks that a practice doesn't necessarily uh, have the ability to get a hold of. I think I heard you say during that answer there was uh, was what I would have called the opportunity cost of time, where a dental practitioner is spending time trying to find these candidates when he could be you know doing his dental work with uh, with patients. Exactly. So, uh, you know, you know, even though they think they're going out on their own and doing it, it doesn't cost anything. It really does cost them. Exactly. And uh, you know, one of the points that I make to the doctor when they when I talk to them about exactly that, I say, doctor, if you spend two hours. Uh, in your practice working with patients and doing treatment and so on, how much can you possibly earn, even on a bad day? <laughs> and, sure. and on a good day, how much can you give up? So, you know, that's a cost that they could, you know, basically use some time up that's not productive, interviewing a candidate that, that doesn't meet the criteria that they're looking for versus a firm like ours can send, you know, two or three qualified, top-quality candidates to them, and so the time the doctor invests in interviewing those folks is going to be much more productive than uh, talking to someone that isn't going to meet their needs. 